Hey, what is going on guys, it's DK. Back at you with another video here. It's writing the sixth game NBA main site on Thursday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL sites on DraftKings. And I'm now making videos as well for NBA Top Shot. If you guys are not familiar with NBA Top Shot, they're basically virtual trading cards, virtual moments. If you guys are unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload an Apple podcast. I have a link in the description below. It's called the DKDFS Show. If you guys are interested in signing up for premium content, I'll offer that on Patreon.com, an esports package which includes Call of Duty CSGO, as well as an NBA package. Now, what's included in that? What is included in the NBA package? Well, you basically you get uh, private roster instruction videos for the main each main and showdown slate. You get player pool of core plays, cash GPP plays, and if then statements regarding injuries. And then finally, you get the private patreon live stream where i go over everything kind of tell you guys which direction that i am going and answer all questions um and then finally i want to thank prize picks for sponsoring the show if you guys are not familiar with prize picks or this is your first time watching the idea is you're taking over under on fantasy points so for for example luka Doncic projected for 56 fantasy points you at the under do at the over um that is basically the idea that you they have a ton of different sports here with college basketball pga uh, esports, soccer. So if you guys want to sign up, you can use the code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word. Link down below. You get a hundred percent match up to a hundred dollars. So you put a hundred dollars in, you get two hundred dollars to play with. Uh, but yeah, with that out of the way, let's jump into it. So before we talk about players and their prices for the six-game slate, let's look back at my lineup here from Wednesday. And Wednesday, they got some tilting to do for sure. So let's go over my lineup. Um, Dejounte Murray, Patty Mills, Lonnie Walker, Jason Tatum, Carl Anthony Towns, Saban Lee. Uh, Trey Lyles and SGA. There, so you guys can see kind of the scores. So, um, yeah, I was I was pretty high in the Spurs guys for value, obviously with them being kind of thin. So I used Mills, Lonnie Walker, and Trey Lyles for value. All of them were solid. Need, like no one was like amazing, but they all got you know about twenty fancy points. Twenty one for Patty, uh, twenty two for Lonnie Walker, and twenty for Trey Lyles. Dejounte Murray finished with over fifty fancy points. Really liked him just because again the Spurs were super super short handed. He was clearly going to be their number one guy in offense. Jason Tatum, that's just one where it's like. Okay, I'll play him in that spot all the time against the Atlanta Hawks with no Kemba Walker. He shot 4 of 20. So, like, players that are in really good spots that look really good, they they can bust. It happens. So, like, people that are like, oh, why did I play Jason Tatum? That's just like, no. He was one of the best plays of the slate um, if we're not taking ownership in consideration. And he was almost seven, 65% owned in this higher dollar stuff. He was the chalk in the high dollar stuff. Um, just unfortunate that he had a terrible shooting game. So no real regrets there. Just, you know, tilting that he shot absolutely terrible. What I am really tilted about is, so Minnesota, Chicago. For, well, first let's talk about foul trouble for Carl Anthony Towns in the first half. Picks up his third, second and third foul right at the beginning of like, the second quarter and misses the entire second quarter. And then the game goes to overtime. But right before it goes to overtime, Carl Anthony Towns falls out. So it's just like, oh, man, he was not that high owned, only about 30% owned. Missed out on a good chunk of minutes in the second quarter. Missed out on overtime. It could have been a massive game for Carl Anthony Towns. Um, now, one guy didn't play that I was super, super high on. It was actually my favorite play of the slate was Jared Allen. I was debating a 2v2 with Jared Allen Sabonis, and even though Sabonis is overpriced versus Towns and SGA. I think the Jared Allen Sabonis would have slightly, uh, uh, you know, did better than this one, but actually both were, were close. Um, SGA mentioned him, liking him as the bring back. Um, he went for 61 fancy points, 42 real life points. Um, another really tilted part is Lou Dort hits a three at the buzzer to end the game. He doesn't hit that shot. That game's going to overtime. So it's just like, oh man, uh, we get overtime for Minnesota, but n not for Carl Anthony Towns. He fouls out, and then could have had overtime for the game that I stack uh, with a super low on SGA at only six percent owned, uh, and then Lou Dort hits the buzzer beater three. So uh, that was that was pretty unfortunate, pretty tilting. Um, but yeah, that's really it for the look back, guys, for uh, Wednesday slate. So let's talk about this six game slate on Thursday. We have four games out right now. Kings and Knicks, a 222 and a half over under. The Knicks are one and a half point favorites. Clippers and Grizzlies, a 228 over under. The Clippers are seven and a half point favorites. Wizards and Nuggets, a 237 over under. The Nuggets are seven point favorites. And Pelicans, Bucks, a 240 over under. The Bucks are nine point favorites. All right, so let's start off with Dallas and Philly. Uh, big news is Porzingis and Maxi Kleber, both questionable. This does change some things. 
if they're both out, then, you know, the, the value guys, kind of like Hardaway Jr., Josh Richardson, Brunson, even Dorian Finney-Smith, these guys are all going to have to play big minutes and will all be decent value plays. And Hardaway, the issue with him is he's very, very reliant on his scoring. Um, Josh Richardson got in some foul trouble, but he probably will play uh, 35-ish minutes. Also, revenge game there if you're into that. And then Jalen Brunson, if both those guys are out, he's been a solid point for a guy I would expect probably around 30 minutes for him. Um, and then Doran Finney-Smith, the Mets are there. Again, he's a super, super low usage guy. So those, all, those four get a boost. And then uh, if if James Johnson starts again at 3.2K, I really do like him for value. He played 28 minutes the last game. So, um, yeah, I would like James Johnson there for value. And then, like, the, the center rotation, man, that was so tilting. So two games ago, Dwight Powell started, played 27 minutes. Last game, only played 11 minutes. Uh, Willie Cauley-Stein played 24 minutes and they had Boban that got in the rotation and we know Boban's a really good point for any guy he played 13 minutes at 21 fancy points I mean we'll see what they do the starting lineup if both Porzingis and Maxi Kleber are out but that's just a headache trying to predict what Rick Carlisle is going to do with that situation um you know honestly I'd probably just take a shot on Boban if I was going to pick one of those guys and just hope the mitts are there because he's that good of a point per minute guy um and then yeah Luca if there's no Porzingis uh obviously does get a slight usage boost um, should play, you know, 35 plus minutes will be a clear, clear number one in this offense. Um, so would like Luke there at the top if there's no Porzingis. If Porzingis and Maxi Kleber are both in, then there's not really a lot of like here on the Dallas side. Moving on to the Philadelphia 76 side, really Joel Embiid stands out at 9.9K. He said back to back terrible shooting games, 6 of 23 of 13, but the price dropped to below 10K. He should be able to feast against the likes of Powell and Cauley Stein and Boban. So um, I do like Joel Embiid a good amount. Seth Curry coming back, so that takes the value basically out of play for me. Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, just secondary plays at their respective prices. So let's move on to Orlando and Brooklyn. This game does have a, a good amount of upside. Two teams that don't play a ton of defense. Vucevic at 10K, I think is a good contrarian play. Still don't love the price on him, but two last four games and one for 6, 74, and 64 fancy points. And like I said, I love, love targeting players against this Brooklyn Nets team. Uh, Evan Fournier at almost 7K just seems priced about right. Um, again, I don't love the price there. Um, you know, Terrence Ross at almost 7K will be a high usage guy off the bench, but I just, I, the price point is seems a little bit too much. There's no Cole Anthony, so Michael Carter Williams at 5'6 will probably start a point guard and probably play close to 30 minutes. I think he's a decent play at that price. Value wise, not a ton I love for the Orlando Magic. Um, James Ennis at 4'1. We probably get about 20 minutes from him. Uh, Dwayne Bacon, Okiki, Aminu. Aminu's at 3-5. He played 22 minutes. And probably if I was going to pick one of these value guys, it would be Al Farouk Amino, just because the minutes are trending up. 13, then 19, then 22. Um, if he plays like 25-ish minutes at 3-5, I think Al Farouk Amino would probably be the value guy I'd look to there on the Orlando side. On the broken net side, it's Harden and Kyrie. I like them both a good amount. Harden has more upside at 10, at 10.8K because he's running the point guard. He's got triple-double upside here. Love the matchup. So really, really like Harden there at the top, especially, again, no Kevin Durant. I think Kyrie Irving is firmly in play, too, below 9K. Um, doesn't have maybe as much upside as James Harden, but still will be the uh, clear number two in this offense. So do like Kyrie. Do like Harden a good amount at their respective prices. Everyone else don't love. Nothing really stands out to me. DeAndre Jordan, Joe Harris, secondary plays. Jeff Green. Uh, is questionable. He missed the last game. TLC, I believe, is probable. And then Shamit is questionable. So I have to keep an eye on that. Um, Bruce Brown is at 4.6K. He played 25 minutes. Shot 11 of 13 that last game. So one for 40 real, uh, fantasy points. Probably not going to get that type of shooting again. I expect 20 to 25 minutes from him, which just makes him kind of a secondary play. Um, and then if like all these questionable guys are out, we can consider a guy like Tyler Johnson, who is a good scorer, played 23 minutes at last game, would have some interest in him for value. Sacramento, New York. So honestly, not a ton of love on the Sacramento side. Uh, New York's been pretty solid defensively. Fox, Halliburton, more contrarian plays at their respective prices. Not really interested in Heald or Barnes. I think Rashawn Holmes is a decent tournament play. Probably get 25 plus minutes. There is no uh, Hassan Whiteside. So I can see taking a shot at Rashawn Holmes for GBPs. But other than that, that's really it. And the New York side, I really like Randall. You guys know I love targeting players against the Sacramento Kings team. Should play 35-ish minutes, 35 plus. I think Randall's one of the better plays of the slate. Um, New Orleans Noel, probable. No, no, somewhat big news here is Alfred Payton is doubtful. So that's probably going to give a boost to guys like Derrick Rose and Manuel Quickly. They also have Austin Rivers they can add to the rotation. 
So I think these guys are more viable here. Derrick Rose played 27 minutes at last game. I think I'm going to take a shot on one of the cheap Knicks guards. It would be Derrick Rose. Um, we'll see what they do with the starting lineup. If D. Rose starts, we'll have more confidence in him. And they can start quickly, too, who's actually a solid point per minute guy. We've seen some big games from him when he gets some minutes. So that's the situation we'll have to keep an eye on, like who ends up starting there for Alfred Payton. Moving on to the Clippers and the Grizzlies, I think Kawhi Leonard, Paul George at 9-3 and 8-8 eight, eight are both pretty solid plays. Both should play, you know, 35-ish minutes. Um, you know, Paul George got limited a little bit that last game, but that was a blowout. So, um, yeah, I think they're both, again, solid plays. Neither are priorities, though. Everyone else are kind of, is still kind of priced up from when a lot of these guys are out, so I don't really like anything else here on the L.A. Clippers side. Like, Pat Beverly is at 4.2K. We probably get somewhere around 20 to 25 minutes from him, but I think there's probably better value on this slate. All right, moving on to the Memphis Grizzlies. So John Morant, Jonas Valanciunas, I think both in play, but both more tournament plays for me. I don't love the match against the Clippers. Um, so yeah, I would I would uh, rank these guys more uh, tournament plays. But Jonas Valanciunas probably plays about 30 minutes. Ja would probably get 35 in a close game. Other than that, like <sighs> Dylan Brooks is questionable, but I don't know if that's going to do a ton because. Basically, everyone else now is healthy, like Grayson Allen, Melton. They have Justice Winslow at 3-8, who did play 26 minutes at last game. I guess it's like a value guy we can consider, but I don't love it. So that's really it for Memphis. Moving on to Washington and Denver. This is a game that has a good amount of upside. Russell Westbrook at 9-5. Really like the price here. Love the matchup here. He's got triple-double upside. The Wizards have been playing better recently, too. So um, I do really like Russell Westbrook at that price. I think Brad Beal firmly in play as well. I do prefer Westbrook because he does more of the peripherals. But both Washington guards firmly, firmly in play. Not super interested in Rui Hashimura. Uh, Davis Bertans is questionable. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, if he is out, it probably would be Denny Avija at 3-1, who picks up the start. If he does, we can consider him an almost min price, but he's been very, very up and down. The center rotation is just really hard to trust. Uh, Mo Wagner's been games where he started, and literally he, last game he started against Denver and literally played three minutes. Uh, this most recent game he played 25 minutes, and Wagner's a good point in front of guy. It's just a matter of will the minutes be there, and it's really hard to trust uh, the Washington coaching staff with the center rotation. Like Robin Lopez at 3-7, he, uh, you know, most of the time he'll play over 20 minutes. He did only play 17 that last game. But, like, I don't, I think there's probably better value plays on, on the slate. So that's really it there for the Washington side against the top two guards. Do prefer Westbrook to Beal. If Davis Bertans is out, uh, we'll see what they do with the starting lineup. I would guess it would probably be Don Denny Abija. If he does start, I think he would be a decent value play because he's almost at min price. On the Denver side, love the matchup here. So Jokic at 10-4 is one of the best spin-ups in my, in my opinion. No one in Washington can stay with him. So really, really do like Jokic. Jamal Murray has been on fire here at 8.4K. Playing huge minutes to 40, 38, 35, and 38 minutes. Um, I think he's definitely viable as well. Um, just because the matchup uh, in this game against Washington of, uh, about a week ago went for 61 fancy points. So, yeah, Jamal Murray definitely in play for tournaments. Now, just know that like, the floor is still there with Jamal Murray. We've seen floor games from him of like 20 to 25 fancy points. That is still possible. Uh, but recently, he's been playing really, really well. MPJ, just the minutes always fluctuate with him. Uh, 19 two games ago, then 40 against Portland. Um, still has kind of taken a backseat to Murray and, and Jokic. So I would say he's more of a secondary play for me. Will Barton's at 5.1K. Again, like the spot here. Probably plays about 30 minutes. Just a fair play. Um, Value-wise, then Camposo 4-2 actually looks pretty decent. 28, 27, 27 minutes last year games. I think he is solid. Uh, ZK Nanji is at 3.2K. 30 and 24 minutes last couple of games. Super low usage guy, but probably plays at least 20 minutes. I think he is an okay punt play. Finally, New Orleans and Milwaukee. So Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, these guys continue to get it done. Um, I don't know what they finished with tonight against Detroit, but they both got there. Zion, um, the price dropped a little bit, but this game is, what, a 240 over under, right? 240 over under, should be played at a fast pace. Um, I'm perfectly fine in Zion. He's been playing really well recently. Also, Ingram, um, been a little more inconsistent, but both the top two Pelicans guys firmly in play here. And I do like Lonzo as well because of the minutes. He's playing huge minutes. I got to stuff the stat sheet. I think he's a, a decent play in the mid-range. Now, Steven Adams is always hard to trust the minutes. He did play over 30 tonight and had a really nice game. So if he's going to continue to play over 30 minutes, I think Steven Adams is a really good play. But like we've also seen games and close games where they've closed with Hernan Gomez, which just makes him a little riskier. Um, Josh Hart's been very up and down. He kind of had a four game tonight, but we've also seen the, some ceiling games from him. So like he's always more in play for tournaments. 
Hernan Gomez at 4-5, um, you know, is definitely riskier with Steven Adams healthy. So just more of a contrarian play at his respective price. Finally, the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis at the top, really do like him. No one in the Pelicans can stay with him. Uh, 73, 67, and 66 fantasy points the last three games. He's really starting to turn it on. So love Giannis at the top. Middleton had that one big game. Other than that, he's been hovering in like the 25 to 35 fantasy point range. So just more of a contrarian play at his price. Value-wise, there's a couple guys. So Bobby Portis, last couple games, has played 24 and 23 minutes. If he's going to continue to play, you know, over 20 minutes, I think he's somebody you could look to for tournaments, but the minutes are always kind of fluctuate for him. Value-wise, there's two guys. It's Pat Connaughton and DJ Augustine. DJ Augustine's been starting the point guard, been playing, you know, somewhere around 25 to 30 minutes. I think he's an okay punt play. And then Pat Connaughton's been hovering around 28 to 30 minutes. Uh, both those guys are decent value plays at their respective prices because of the high over-under. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for the video today, guys. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate it if you leave a like button on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you know when to upload videos so you don't want to live. I will be doing a YouTube live stream before lock to go over everything, answer all you guys' questions. So make sure to check out the live stream tomorrow, guys. Thanks again. Have a great night and I'll see you all tomorrow.